Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials, I'll teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is about group naming for regular expressions. I'm going to pull up my website, javacjava.com, select menu, and then regex tutorials. Scroll down to the regex group naming tutorial. Now in my regex capturing group numbering tutorial, I demonstrated how capturing groups are automatically numbered when the regex is compiled. Just to reiterate, right? You've got a capturing group here, and that's so the group count equals one. You've got two capturing groups. Here's one, and here's the other, right? Two. Three capturing groups here. Here's the start of group number one and the end of group number one. And here's group number two and group number three. Right, and then I also said that non-capturing groups begin with a question mark, right? In this particular question case, it's a non-capturing non, uh, group uh, question mark I, which says ignore case, and then you've got three capturing groups here, one beginning here at this left parenthesis and ending here at this right parenthesis, and then you've got number two here and number three right here, okay. Now, if you remember back to my other tutorials, uh, as far as regex goes, I always said that, you know, it depends on the context where these meta characters are used, and um, the question mark is, in fact, a meta character. So, um, I wasn't completely honest when I said, you know, that a non capturing group began with a question mark, because there are certain exceptions to that rule when, um, depending on the context that it's used in. So, but one thing, that, one thing that I pointed out in that tutorial is that if we change the rig eggs at some time in the future, then we run into the risk of breaking code that is hard-coded to the numbered capturing group. Now, we can prevent that sort of thing from happening by assigning a name to each group. We do this by prefixing our name group with a question mark, and then you've got your, uh, basically, your greater than, and then whatever you name it, your alias, right? And then your, um, and then your, your, I'm sorry, your less than and then your greater than, right? Or your your diamond syntax, essentially. It's very similar to, like, say, you know, uh, generic syntax, but it's nothing like it, as far as conceptually speaking, okay? So here's what we can do. <clears throat> Take this one up here, for example, where we just have a ordinary capturing group right there. Right, if we want to name our capturing group, same thing up here. We do a dollar sign, right? And then our our left diamond, right? Or chevron, if you want to call it there. And then I'm going to name this one plural, and then our right chevron, right? And then immediately following that will be the regular expression there, okay? So this syntax right here is what will name that particular um, regular expression directly following it, okay? All right, so... Let's go ahead and come down here and highlight the source code. Control C to copy or right click and select copy. I'm gonna move my browser off screen and I've got a shortcut to the command prompt on my desktop, but if you don't, you can create one really fast by right clicking, selecting new shortcut, CMD next and finish. It's just that easy. If you're new to my tutorials, when you open up the DOS prompt, first thing you wanna do is type in Java C, which is a Java compiler. You should see all this stuff scroll by. However, if you receive an error message, watch my tutorial on installing the Java development kit. Make sure you get that installed and configured before continuing. CLS to clear the screen, CD space backslash C short for change directory, backslash tells it to go the root. I'm gonna make a directory here called Java with the MD command. I already have that folder, but if you don't, I'll go ahead and create it for you. I'm gonna make another directory off that folder called uh, regex group naming, okay, I'm gonna change directories to that. I'm gonna notepad regex group naming.java. Control V to paste or right click and select paste. Let's come up here and save this. Okay, now hopefully you watched my tutorial on, um, on capturing group numbering before this one because I'm using basically exact same source code only modifying it just, just slightly, okay? Um, so basically, for my uh, regular expression, it's this right here. And it may look kind of like scary there, but it really isn't. The only thing I added in is, is my capturing group number two here, right? Let's talk about capturing group number zero, which is the whole entire thing, right? And not including this particular non-capturing group here, but then capturing group number one 
is this, right? Starting at this left parenthesis and ending at this right parenthesis. Capturing group number two starts at this next left parenthesis and ends at the next right parenthesis. So right here. So this is capturing group number two. Let's see if I can get it all highlighted there. Right on, right there. Okay. Now inside of capturing group number two, I'm, I've, I'm naming this guy singular. Okay. So here we got our question mark, our left chevron our alias or name per se, right? And then our right chevron. And then here's our regular expression, which is basically the string literal lizard. And then uh, the negation character class. So we don't anything but an S here. So this will be singular, okay? Now our second capturing group is listed right here. And in order to name that, we do uh, the question mark, left chevron. And I'm gonna name this one plural, right chevron, and then lizard. And then with a character class S indicating that this, uh, we're requiring an S after that, right? So either singular or plural there, okay? Same exact search string is Godzilla lizard. Lizards are reptiles, but lizards are just a subclass of reptiles. I think the re real question is who really cares, okay? So we're gonna go on with that there. And the first thing I'm gonna do is display the group count, okay? And the reason why I'm gonna display the group count is because as you know from my previous tutorial, I said that a non-capturing group uh, starts off with a question mark. Well, it depends on the context. So this non-capturing group will still not apply, but we're still gonna get three capturing groups out of that, right? What I just reviewed is like one and two and three, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and come up and save this and let's run this right at let's put our screen. Let's compile this and let's go ahead and run it. All right, so right up top, first thing you'll notice is we get the number three displayed to the console there when we display the group count here, okay? And then I've got the same thing, int singular equals zero, plural equals zero, and I'm just invoking the find method on our match or object here. And of course, while that's true, we're gonna display stuff to the console. So the first thing we're gonna display is an ordinary call to the group method here, okay? An ordinary call to the group method will return back lizard, right? Which in our search string, is this right here. This is our first match on, on lizard there for a regular expression match for that pattern. And so that's what we get for the ordinary call to group. Now, demonstrating the call to group two, and you'll notice this is the same from the last, last one there, we get um, lizard, right? Because that matches this particular regu regular expression right here in group two, lizard and then not, anything but an S, negation S, okay? And then, so now we can, here's how we do it, right? We, we basically say m.group, and you'll notice there's three different overload versions of the group method there. There's one that takes zero parameters, there's one that takes an int parameter, and one that takes a string parameter. So in here, we've got the string parameter one passing at the string literal of singular, which is what we've named our uh, group up here, okay? So all matches on our singular group guess what, right? Um, lizard question mark is singular, so that returns back there, right? And then um, we'll display group three, right? Which our, our uh, regular expression on that one is essentially lizard, and then with an S required after that. And so that third grouping, which is from here to here to here, right? And that third capture group, that's gonna return back null, as will if we invoke the group uh, method with the overloaded version taking the string literal of plural in there, that's going to return back null as well. So you can see that the capture grouping numbers match whatever we got for our aliases there. So nothing is nothing as far as the capture grouping will break if you already have that in your existing code and you say, hey, I want to go ahead and name these, right? You know, for, for whatever future reference or just to, you know, whatever your reason is you want to name these. So it's not going to break anything that exists. So you far, if you already have something in your code like this, card coding the, the numbers of the group there, that's just fine, right? Um, the neat thing about naming them like this is we could we could actually change the order of, for example, this this group and we could swap it with this one here, right? Whereas what's normally three would become two and two would become three. That would that would cause this code to error out. But guess what? These guys would be just fine because they're not dependent on any sort of error or indexing per se, right? Okay, and then down here, the final thing that I did differently here is I just told them, I'm saying if group if the group invoking the um, singular naming group there is not equal to null, we'll go ahead and increment singular plus plus 
if the group plural is not equal to null, we'll go ahead and increment plural plus plus and then display that to the console. Singular lizard usage, plural lizard usage, lizards usage, I should say, okay? So here's what ultimately what we get. The second time through, where we've got the uppercase lizards, right? And you'll notice that that matches the, the regular expression lizards, of course, and then our, our non-grouping, or non-capturing group over here for ignore case, right? And so that basically, uh, the second time around, group number two, singular, null, null. Group three, which is plural lizards and plural, right, lizards, that, that works out good there. Ordinary group on the next one around is lizards, all lowercase. Group two and singular, no match there, null and null. Group three, there's a match, and plural, there's a match for lizards. So, and then singular lizard usage one and plural lizards usage two. So all worked out good. So um, basically that's, that's about it for naming there. It's all pretty straightforward there. And if you understand the capturing groups, the naming the capturing groups is pretty, pretty straightforward on the syntax and pretty straightforward on evoking that too as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this and get rid of that and um, just leave you with a quick final thought, you know, and that's just stay tuned for my next tutorial where I will teach you about back references. That concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.